and gifting lots of sourdough. So today I'm gonna to show you two brand new recipes on how you can dress up your sourdough and gift it at Christmas time. So we're not gonna do bread, but we're gonna do things like a chocolate pastry dough. I'm gonna show you how to make that. And we're gonna dress up our cinnamon dough that we've done in other videos. And we're gonna make some chocolate knots. I'll show you how to package it up really pretty and give it away at Christmas. So I already have the cinnamon dough all made. Uh, I'm not gonna demonstrate how to do that today, but I will link the video with the recipe and the tutorial on how to mix up the cinnamon dough in case you need a bit of a refresher. And I am gonna show you how to walk through and make your chocolate pastry. So we'll get started with the chocolate pastry first while this ferments for a little while, and then we'll mix up all of our fun goodies so that you can give them to your friends and family at Christmas. So we'll start with our chocolate pastry. Um, and I say pastry, it's sort of like a chocolate pie crust. It really is. So I have our cocoa and our flour and sugar and salt uh, in the, the bowl here, and we're gonna add in our grated butter. So I make sure that the butter is cold and I grate it just like I do, uh, just, to, just like I do my pie crust. So we're gonna take this and pour it in. And then you can use a pastry cutter. I'm just using my dough whisk here. Um, and you're going to incorporate that in. And then once we have a crumbly mixture and we have that incorporated into your flour, your dry ingredients, uh, I'm gonna take my sourdough discard and I'm gonna dump that in. So the sourdough discard in this particular recipe acts almost like the liquid that sort of binds that dough together because this is gonna give me a, a chocolatey kind of crumbly mixture. And when I add the sourdough in, it's going to pull it all together and form a really nice cohesive dough. And then we're just gonna let that sit. And you can let that sit um, in the fridge for a long time and do like an extended kind of fermentation of it. With pastry and sourdough, I don't like to do that as much. So I will let this sit probably for about an hour and then we will be ready to make it into our final product. Okay, so that looks good. You wanna almost be able to squeeze it in your hands just like pie crust and it break apart. And now we're gonna add our sourdough in. Because this is taking on a liquid component in the recipe, we wanna have really soupy discards. So bring it out of the fridge uh, and you know, if it's been sitting there for a while, the longer the better type of thing. This one is pretty thick. So what happens is when this is the thicker discard, uh, what you're going to end up with it taking on more of a flour component. And so don't be afraid to keep like a, a glass of water or something nearby because this is just flour and water, of course. Your sourdough is just flour and water. So if you're finding that it's a little bit too thick and you put it into your dough, what you can do is just add a little tiny bit of water because like any discard recipe, the thicker the discard, um, the less flour in the recipe you're gonna end up needing, and the thinner the discard, the more flour you're gonna end up needing. So for this type of recipe, we want a thinner, soupier discard. For like bread and things like that, um, you're using 11 and you wanna have a thicker. So when people say, oh, I had to add way more flour to that recipe, it's because your sourdough is not thick enough. So that's just a little tip. So you'll see here, it's staying quite crumbly. So I'm probably gonna have to add a little bit of water because my discard was quite fresh and not in my fridge for a long time. And it's pretty dark in my kitchen today because there's a storm going on outside, but hopefully you can see what I'm doing here. So it's staying a little bit crumbly. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take this glass of water and I'm gonna go into the side of the bowl where there's a little bit of dry flour and just a tiny little bit. If you need a measurement, you can go about a tablespoon at a time with your liquid. And usually that, that does the trick. You, it really doesn't need a lot. You don't have to pour it in there because we don't want soggy dough or anything like that. You just want to be able to kind of mix the dough together. So I'm going to pour this out on the counter so that you can get a better feel for what I'm working with. And obviously, uh, pastry doesn't have quite as much sugar as we put in this particular dough. This is quite a bit of sugar in it, but you can see it's coming together nicely. So this takes on kind of a similar consistency to a pie crust or a biscuit dough. Okay, so it's pretty sticky on my hands, but that's all right. You can grab a little bit of flour if you want. 
push those out of the way. And you can always kind of roll it in the flour. And we are going to set that aside for about a half an hour. And then we'll be ready to roll it out and put our filling in it and make it into our final product. So this is a really nice dough. You can see it really came together quite nicely um, after you work it a little bit. We're not kneading it, but we just wanna make a nice cohesive dough. because we don't wanna develop any gluten. So you don't wanna knead pastry, but because you you're not developing any, any gluten, you want it to stay quite flat, but just to kind of make it a smoother dough. And then we'll set this in our bowl and let this sit for a bit. So we rolled out our dough on the counter. Um, we cut the dough in half first, and I will show you the other half to uh, how we roll it out. So don't be afraid to use some flour. It doesn't matter if it gets white on it. It won't bake like that. You really do need it for this recipe just because it is a little bit of a stickier recipe. So we're going to trim around the edges of this because we want it to be a perfect rectangle. Okay, so and then we will use the scraps. So we'll save the scraps. And just kind of make it as straight as you possibly can. So this one, what I'll do here, take those edges off. Okay, again, you're gonna save those because we can use them. You just want to kind of bring that corner down a bit just to make it as much of a rectangle as you can because we're going to cut out our triangles from this. Okay. All right, so now we're going to cut out our triangles. They don't have to be perfect because we can trim them up and I'll show you how that looks. So how you want to do this, I try to make it about 16 inches. This is 17. So you want to find your middle point excuse me, um, so about eight and a half inches. And then you wanna find the middle point. So that's at the top. And then you wanna find the middle point in between here and here. So it'll be like four or in a bit. Okay, so it doesn't have to be exact. You know, definitely don't have to make it perfectly exact. But the reason that we do it like that is because when you're measuring it out, okay, so we have our one there no one there you're going to come down straight from the corner and you're going to go up to the center and this gives you more symmetrical triangles they're not perfect it's hard to make them perfect but it's very close okay and so go up to the corner And that gives you three, obviously, but we're going to do it to the other half, so we'll have six, and so we'll make three um, trees. And then we'll we can you can roll that out and make those again, but see how nicely those fit together, and that's what you want. Okay, so we'll make our filling, and then we'll put the filling uh, in the center, and I'll show you how to make these into your trees. We'll roll that second one out though. If you want, I'm gonna roll it out to 17. You, I like I like about 16, it's just easier numbers, um, but that's fine. And then this one, it, it still fits together. You can make a bit of a wonky tree or you can crumple that up with your scraps and you can roll it out again and you can make more. But um, I will leave you guys to do that and I will show you kind of how to configure your Christmas trees. So same thing with this side. Don't be afraid to use some flour. So it, because there's so much sugar in this dough, it tends to be a bit grainy and it can split and get sticky. So I keep kind of peeling up, make sure that there's some underneath. You don't want it to kind of stick to the end. So this is about the width that I wanted. And now I'm just gonna keep rolling it out and evening it, making it even and as close to we want to go as close to 17 as we can. So we're not quite to 16. So we'll keep rolling this out and then we'll square it off and we'll get our triangles sorted. Okay, so same thing. We're gonna go from the corner 
down to the point, and then up. So I like lining it up with, um, with my bench knife. I find that works really nicely, but if you have like a pizza cutter, that works nice too. This is just a really nice straight line, so I find it works nice. Okay, and then same thing, square it off. So now we have our six pieces, lots of scraps. Again, don't throw out your scraps. You can use them. You can roll them back out and make smaller trees or whatever you want, but I'm just gonna show you today kind of how to manipulate these ones. So we have a similar size for all these. This one looks a little small. I'm not really sure why, but that's fine. So what we'll do with this one is when we put the filling in, we'll just go through and we'll just trim those edges off and that's fine. All right, so this is the fun part. <clears throat> Let's get our chocolate triangles. Make sure you kind of match them up as best you can. Um, obviously they're not gonna be perfect and that's fine. You can just trim them up. So I like to trim mine before I get the filling on it. Actually that works really well. Sometimes you have to kind of like, it's like a puzzle piece. You have to like flip them around a little bit. These ones barely, barely, barely need to be trimmed. And you don't have to trim them. I'm just, I'm just a little bit particular with, with it. Okay, so then you're gonna take your chocolate frosting. So again, um, all I did was melt chocolate chips. So these are dark mint chocolate chips. I melted them with two tablespoons of butter and two tablespoons of cream. And then I uh, pulled it right off the heat and whisked in three or a half a cup of powdered sugar, that's it. It's very easy and it's so good. And then you have this like beautiful milk chocolate. You don't have to do milk chocolate chips if you can't get them. So ours are Hershey milk chocolate chips. Um, if you want, you can go out and just buy like a mint, like Lind chocolate bar or something and, and chop it up and that works fine too. Okay, so just a nice thin layer. And again, I put this in the fridge. Um, I like it to be a little harder because then it, it spreads nicer when you put it on. Um, okay. So then we're just gonna go down the line. You wanna leave a line down the center so you don't wanna come cut all the way through. You wanna leave a line down the center and I like to kind of space them out just to start, and that worked quite nicely. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then go on the other side and just kind of map out the other side too. And again, you don't wanna go all the way through. So let's start at the bottom. Obviously this is, it's much easier on like a large scale. Like if you're making a huge one, the smaller ones are always harder. Okay. And then basically you're just twisting, twisting them up. Make sure that they don't break in the center. You might have to pinch them together and don't twist them too harshly. So sometimes it helps to go in one direction and then the other direction. Um, this one actually wants to go in this direction. So I'm gonna keep going with this. And usually I'll do this right on my parchment. Um, I'm just doing this one here so that I can demonstrate it, but usually I'll do it right on the parchment just because they're a little bit tricky to, to lift up. And then these upper ones, you almost just fold them gently over, okay? I'm actually gonna flip this and go the other way. Other way with it. These 
bottom ones are the hardest ones I find because they tend to want to split. So I like to kind of form like a little like tree trunk and then do them. Okay, so there's your tree. I'm gonna do the rest of them right on the parchment because again, they're really hard to lift up once they're, you know, once they're done. So I'm gonna lift that up, put it on the parchment and then I'll do the other ones on the parchment and we'll get them into the oven. All right, so let's get these into the oven, our Christmas trees. Um, I'm gonna spread these ones out a little bit more. Okay, so they aren't gonna look beautiful right this second. They're gonna be a little messy looking and that's totally fine because once they come out of the oven, we'll dress them up. We can use a glaze, we can use some powdered sugar um, to make them look really beautiful. Okay, so our trees are out of the oven. Basically what we're going for with these is we just want them to look textured. So they're not gonna look perfect. Um, you know, they're gonna push together and kind of like create a little bit of like a clustered look. Oh, that one kind of cracked a bit. Um, we just want them to look textured, that's it. Because then when we start putting the glaze on, it develop, it gives like this kind of like textured tree look. And you can do some sprinkles on there or whatever you want. Um, I actually kind of like just like a powdered sugar, like a dusting. So we need to let these completely cool and then we are going to dress them up a little bit. So here's a better look at what they look like out of the oven. So they're just textured chocolate trees. Basically, we don't want to do too much to them right now because we they will crack apart. So we want to leave them to completely cool before we dress them up. All right, so we bit the bullet and turned the lights on in here. It's very dark out. It's only three o'clock in the afternoon. It's kind of crazy. Okay, so we just made up with just a quick glaze and I'm just gonna drizzle it over the trees. So another way you can do this, I don't have a lot of powdered sugar and apparently everybody where I live is currently baking. So it's, you know, you can't get it. But I think with these trees personally is that they need to be dressed up. So I do, I like to do like a full frosting or full icing on them. And then I'm just doing like some sprinkled sugar. Um, you can do some other little like ornaments. If I had more powdered sugar, I would drizzle it over top or I would kind of dust it over top. So you can do it kind of whatever way you want. And basically again with the chocolate, it's just to give it texture. Obviously they're not like the most beautiful things when they're just kind of sitting there without anything on them. You can really make these look quite lovely at Christmas um, with minimal effort. So I'm running out of I'm running out of my frosting, but you can also do a chocolate frosting on these, which is really pretty and dress them up. So that is them, you know, finished. If I was gonna do this again, I would obviously do more frosting on them. But um, when you would gift these, I put them in one of our boxes. So you can put some parchment paper around there and then just put it in the center. The kids love decorating them. And then you can give this really nice chocolate pastry. So it is uh, like, it's a delicious pastry very flaky, it's very chocolatey, and it's delicious. So again, you want to dress them up a little better than I have here, but um, you know, with some frosting and some sprinkles, they look really pretty around the holidays. Okay, so we're gonna do the cinnamon, uh, the cinnamon dough. Again, I will share the other video the link to the other video so that you can see how I make this dough, but I will also share the recipe. It's very straightforward. It's a beautiful dough to work with, um, but we wanna just roll this out. We're gonna make chocolate knots out of this. So we're gonna do the same filling that we did for our Christmas trees, our chocolate Christmas trees. We are going to, um, we're gonna use the same filling for this. You can also use Nutella. Nutella is a little bit, um, Hmm, runnier, but it also works. So it just depends on, you know, what your flavor is. Or we're gonna do two layers. You can do one layer of this and one layer of Nutella. Um, you know, the sky's the limit type thing. 
Okay, so we're just gonna roll this out. As you can see, this dough works really well. It rolls out really nicely. So you wanna make sure that it's as kind of equal as possible. So if you're noticing it's thinner and thicker in parts, then you can just kind of spread it out. So we're gonna take our, our spread and then we're just gonna make it as even as we can. Um, you don't want it super thick because don't forget, we're gonna do another layer. So this is again a mint chocolate. You can do it with milk chocolate for the chocolate frosting and you can use Nutella for some of the layers as well. Okay, so again, you want this to be thin. So I'm just gonna go and spread as best I can and I'm taking off some we don't want a really thick base here and it will go on quite thick and then once you have it all spread out you just go around and you pick some off and then keep spreading it okay so now we're going to fold this over to the other side you want it to be kind of as even as possible and then we're going to Roll it out thin again. So sometimes when I do this, the chocolate will squish out the end. It's not happening as much right now, but you want to make another. So what I did was there's the seam. So I folded it this way and I turned it and now I'm, I'm spreading it out again. You don't have to do it like that, but I'm just finding this particular time. It seems to be working best to do it like that. And then you'll see as we make it thinner, You'll be able to see the chocolate right through, and that's what you want. You want the dough to be really, really nice and thin. That means with every single knot that we make, there'll be more, like, more chocolate. Okay, that's pretty good. Sometimes it's nice to pick the edges up, make sure that they do pick up okay. Um, and if you need to slide some flour underneath, that's fine. Okay, so now we're gonna take our chocolate and start to spread it on again. It starts to, it cools, like the, the, the butter hardens in this really quickly, so it's good to kind of get as much on. I, what I like to do is kind of spread it around in different areas and then go back and start to even it out just to make sure that you kind of get what you can and that we have enough to go all the way around. So right to the edges, pull that chocolate right over. The dough is gonna start to warm up. So this dough um, for this recipe, sometimes it helps to put it in the fridge for a minute when before you roll it out. So now we want to fold it in thirds. So sometimes I don't get this right. Sometimes I got to go back. That's not perfect. And, and I, I will trim those edges because I want mine to be fairly even. And it takes a minute for me to get it right. Okay, we're gonna turn those edges there. All right, now pull those edges to the end. I'm gonna use a little flour on my hand or on my counter again. Because you don't want this to stick to the counter because it will rip holes because the, the dough is really thin right now. Now we want to roll it straight. We don't want it to get too much wider. We just want to roll it straight. So we want to keep it narrow if we can. So what I find helps for this as I'm going across and rolling it out is my bench knife. So if you're finding that you need to kind of tighten up those edges, you can. So any 
kind of flat surface. So again, you want to roll to see that chocolate right through the dough. Okay. So we're starting to kind of go through on this end a little tiny bit. And then this end could probably come out a little bit further. I want to clean these up. So we are going to use a pizza cutter for the next part of this. So this is actually a little wider than I like, but it's still perfectly workable. All right, so you're just going to cut strips in this now, essentially. Um, I don't really ever measure it, but you know, it's kind of, it's kind of as thick as you want. And then basically what you're going to do is you're going to come with your pizza cutter and you're gonna cut little tiny rows. Okay? And you're gonna twist it. So twist it all up. And then once you do, you're gonna start to kind of twist it in. And you wanna bring this side almost up and over and tuck it under. Okay, so it just sort of looks like a weird knot. <laughs> and we're gonna put them together in our cast iron, okay? Because what we want is we want supports. We want them to kind of all cook into one another. They're gonna be sort of like pull apart rolls almost. Otherwise, if you bake them on a baking sheet, they're just gonna spread out and flatten and you're not gonna be overly happy with how they look, I don't think. So make sure that you put them together or you can also put them in a muffin tin. It is gonna give you the shape of a muffin tin if you do that, but it will hold the shape of the knot and they're so quick tasty. So either together in cast iron or um, in a muffin tin. Okay, so you're just twisting opposite directions. Once you get it all twisted, start to roll it under. This side's gonna come up, over and under. Okay, we'll do a little bit of a more close up for you to see. So you're doing your four strips. I mean, you don't have to do four either. You could do three. And then you're just twisting it opposite directions. This one's actually a little bit thicker than the other one. Okay, and then once you get it twisted, you're gonna roll, start to roll it in. And then this one's gonna come up and over and just kind of gently tuck under, almost like you're making a knot, but it's just gonna kind of stick to itself on the other side. Okay, and so there's nothing special looking about them. They're, you know, they're gonna go into the oven, but they're gonna bake and expand and they'll be really pretty and really chocolatey when they're done. Okay, we're losing daylight here, but here's the knots all done up and we're gonna stick those into the oven and I'll show you what they look like when they come on out. All right, here these are out of the oven and I'm gonna show you, we are gonna make a simple syrup, um, just a one-to-one -one water to sugar, boil it down, let it get thick and we're gonna brush it on top of this. But these are so beautiful as like a pull apart chocolate knot. Um, you can squeeze them into our 10 inch uh, box. It just fits, they're still a bit too warm right now so I'm not gonna shove them in. But if you want, you can um, get a 12 inch box or you can make them in a 12 or 10 inch uh, cast iron and it'll fit a little bit better. But I'm gonna let these cool a little bit. We're gonna brush them, but you can see how thin, almost pastry like, and that's why you want to roll this really thin. You can see all those beautiful layers of the knots. This is just one of my favorites. So I'll leave that to cool and I'll show you how it looks at the end. Okay, so again, this was just uh, one part water, one part sugar, boiled down until it is this beautiful, simple syrup. 
and we are just going to brush that over top. And the reason that we do this, I prefer this uh, with this particular recipe as opposed to a glaze because it makes them nice and shiny. And you can use a cane sugar or a maple sugar. So it's, you know, it's a little tiny bit less sugar than I guess using powdered sugar. Uh, but it almost or crystallizes on the top. It will harden a bit. So there's like a little bit of a, not a crunch, but like just a little bit of like a shiny kind of hardness to the top. It seals all that goodness in. So I like using this, but you can use whatever you want. You can dust with powdered sugar. You can um, put a glaze on it. You can leave them as is. You know, they certainly don't need anything at all. There's lots of lots of good stuff inside, so you don't need to, but I, I like this simple syrup. And again, they just peel right apart. You have your cute little knot and it makes a really pretty presentation for a gift at Christmas time. I just wanted to give you like a final look at them because I wanted you to listen. Like you can hear, this is like this really awesome crust on the top of these rolls and they just look and taste delicious. This is a must make and is so easy.